Anyone who believes in indefinite growth on a physically finite planet is either mad or an economist. We don't want to focus politics on a notion that involves the rejection of principles around which a large majority of our fellow citizens organize their lives. We are not as endlessly manipulable and as predictable as you would think. There's no bigger difference between a curious person and an incurious person. You know as soon as you meet somebody, as soon as you sit next to them at dinner or, or, or at some kind of event, whether or not that person is really kind of genuinely curious about you or about whatever the, the topic of, of discussion is. Um, and when, of course, you meet a curious person, it's a uh, delight. Um, uh, they tend to be much more you know, pleasurable and interesting, uh, uh, um, just generally better people. Um, and yet, of course, I don't really understand why anybody, you know, Stephen Fry made this comment a few years ago, why, why are people incurious? It seems to be, that he says it's the oddest and most foolish failing there is. There's no excuse for it, especially now that we have access to so much fascinating knowledge and, uh, and information. But it's not just me. It turns out that this divide between the curious and the incurious is an increasingly important one. Highly curious people are in greater demand than ever before um, in, in modern economies. And they're pulling away from ev everyone else. So we're having a lot of debates in this country around inequality at the moment and uh, around the developed world. And we hear a lot about the 1%, but that diverts us slightly from a wider inequality, which is that there's a growing pay gap between the highly educated and the rest in developed economies. So this data is from the US, but similar shift can be observed in, in the UK and other developed economies. You can see there's a growing gap here. Um, there's, a, there's a gap between people with a degree, some, some college education, and no college education, which is the, which is the kind of uh, uh, the flat line. But the growing gap is between people with a four-year degree and, and the rest. According to, to Sophie von Stumm, who's a... a psychologist at, at Birkbeck, educational achievement is driven by curiosity. So she, she calls a hungry mind the single best predictor of educational achievement. So curious people are the people who are really kind of driving this, this, uh, this trend. And it's not just educational achievement that's, that's driven by, the, by curiosity. It's also increasingly uh, success in the workplace after education. And the underlying reason for that is that technology is replacing routine work. So even work that requires a, a degree of knowledge and intelligence, if it's just routine, then robots are, are replacing it. And that's what, what technology replaces first, and it has done throughout history. But increasingly, you know, as we move forward, you'll see smart machines do this more and more, is they're taking over the routine jobs. So curious people, intellectually curious people, people who are capable of learning throughout their career, of asking questions, good questions, of adapting and collaborating with others from different disciplines, people who are capable of really thriving in this world of non-routine work, in other words, um, are the people that are going to, to do better. So there's been a lot of debate among psychologists over this for, for decades. Because curiosity is a slightly baffling combination of intellect, emotion, and drive. But the simplest and most profound model of curiosity was created by George Lowenstein, who's a psychologist and a behavioral economist. And he says that curiosity is generated when you face an information gap. When you know something, but you know that you don't know everything. And this makes you want to know more. It's, uh, it's deceptively powerful theory. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. Because what it's saying is that curiosity doesn't exist in a vacuum. You need the bait of information in order to, to want more. So uh, just to give you a, a, a mundane example, let's say, that, let's say I'm talking to you and let's imagine that you know nothing about opera and a lot about football or quite a lot about football. And as we're talking, I, I drop in some uh, intri intriguing fact about opera. You probably won't be that interested in it because you don't know anything about operas. You've got nothing really to get purchase on. Um, and so you'll wait until the conversation moves on. If I then drop in something intriguing about football, you go, oh, really? Is that true? I didn't know that. Um, because you had that kind of base of knowledge about football in order to get more interested. If the conversation had stopped after I dropped in the fascinating opera fact, which, by the way, I never do, so you have to worry about that, um, I might have thought, oh, that's an incurious person. What I didn't understand is that your curiosity depends on what knowledge you have in, in, in the first place uh, and whether or not that therefore creates an information gap for you.
Now, storytellers understand this principle of information gaps instinctively. And they are masters at, at creating information gaps, at opening them up and, and, and closing them, and then opening them up and closing them. That's basically how a narrative works. That's how it unspools. So Agatha Christie will tell you in her opening chapter that Mr. Ratchet was stabbed to death in his compartment. That engages your attention. Um, and the information gap, you don't know who did it, sucks you in. And every chapter she'll give you a bit more information and open up another gap and she'll sort of pull you through, through the narrative. So that's basically how narrative and storytelling play, opening up information gaps, closing them, opening them up, closing them. And you'll see the same principle at work in the way that the modern internet works. Um, so this is a, a wonderful quote from Peter Coachley, who's the founder of Upworthy, the viral news organisation. And he understands this theory of information gaps very well. I mean, he's explicitly referenced it. Uh, and he's put it to work with incredible success. Upworthy and, and other viral news sites are experts at opening up information gaps in their headlines, itches that you have to scratch. Uh, so he says it explicitly here. Social headlines, he calls it a curiosity gap. Social headlines